Well, hello, Facebook Live. Um, uh, we're here for another uh, Facebook Live presentation from the law firm, uh, Bond and Botus Law Offices. My name is Brad Botus, and my friend and law partner, Gail Donaldson, is joining me today. I see where we have a few people still logging in, so we're going to take just a minute before we get started. Welcome, Gail. Oh, good to be here. Thanks for joining me this week. Oh, thanks for inviting me. Um, and just to remind our viewers, um, uh, my name is Brad Botus, and I'm an attorney with the Bond and Botus Law Offices. Um, uh, and we are doing these Facebook Live presentations weekly during the current COVID-19 pandemic, just to kind of be here to answer questions and help steer people through what's a scary time for a lot of us. Um, uh, Gail and I and our, our, the other attorneys with our offices have been doing a consumer bankruptcy work for a number of years, and uh, we feel like we can help in this manner by, by sharing information. Um, we, we just want to help people be able to kind of regain control of their finances and um, be proactive. Don't just sit back during this time. You need to engage. You need to explore your options and you need to reach out for help. Uh, we are offering free phone and video consultations in all of our offices right now. You can call the number on the screen or visit our website to schedule a consultation. But again, um, the consultations during this time are absolutely free. Um, no obligation whatsoever. We just want to be here to answer questions and again, just kind of guide you through the current situation. Um, so just to recap, um, Bond and Botus Law Offices are located across Alabama, Mississippi, and we're in the Knoxville area in Tennessee. Um, and for the last 30 years plus, we've been helping people with financial problems. Um, I'm fortunate today to have my good friend and law partner, Gail Donaldson, with me. Um, Gail is the uh, managing attorney for our offices in Montgomery, Alabama and Opelika, Alabama. She uh, has been with our firm for a long time. We've been um, friends and uh, Gail has practiced with us uh, for over 20, well over 20 years now. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, won't, I won't go into too much detail again here, but I'm, I'm just always so proud to be able to say that Gail started with us um, answering telephones and typing petitions. She started um, out of college and then worked her way through law school and uh, began practicing law. And again, now is the managing attorney for our offices in Montgomery and Opelika, Alabama. Uh, absolutely one of the most respected consumer bankruptcy attorneys in the Middle District of Alabama. She uh, teaches other attorneys and uh, serves on panels uh, to help the bar um, in different regards. So very proud to have her with us today. We're doing these Facebook Live presentations just to help people through this current time. There's a lot of nervousness, a lot of anxiety, a lot of people that just don't know what to do because because for the first time in their life, they're unable to pay their bills as they become due. Um, a lot of people not receiving paychecks uh, or not receiving full paychecks, and, and we want to answer your questions. Uh, we are doing these presentations every Wednesday at 1 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, two weeks ago, uh, Amy Tanner from our uh, Huntsville, Alabama office joined us, and she um, helped us talk about Chapter 13 bankruptcy and uh, the options that Chapter 13 bankruptcy offers as opposed to a straight liquidation bankruptcy. And last week, we had a fascinating um, discussion with Suzanne Shin um, in our Birmingham, Alabama office about the morality of filing bankruptcy. So we, we discussed what the Bible has to say about bankruptcy. And um, uh, both of those um, uh, presentations are available on our Facebook pages. And I encourage you, if you have questions or need additional information, to go back and listen to those videos. Um, but what Gail and I are going to talk about today is, I think, really the best part of what we do. And that's what 
life is like for our clients after the bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people put off calling us. They, they put off talking to a bankruptcy attorney, Gail, because they're nervous. Uh, the word bankruptcy scares people. Um, they just don't know. They, they have this perception that bankruptcy is going to keep them from having any type of credit for mm -hmm. 10 years or be unable to buy a house or buy a car. And mm -hmm. um, you and I both know that's that's not necessarily the case. Um, and people can use bankruptcy for its intended purpose. When Congress created the bankruptcy laws, it was so honest individuals could obtain a fresh start, a chance to start over. Um, so I encourage you now, again, try to get over the anxiety that you're dealing with. Um, anxiety can cause depression. It can cause you just to shut down. Mm -hmm. Overcome those things, be proactive and reach out for help. Uh, as, I, as I've said, all of our offices in Alabama, Tennessee, and Mississippi are currently offering absolutely free consultations with an attorney. You can do the consultation from the safety and the comfort of your own home or office. We'll join you by video like we are today, or we'll just do a telephone call. Um, but however you want to do it, we want to answer your questions and just give you um, a little bit of confidence going forward. We've been through this. We know that the end of a bankruptcy, the discharge that you can obtain in bankruptcy can really be exciting. Uh, you know, Gail, I, people come in, they meet with us. And now, of course, they're meeting us with by video or phone. Um, but when they learn what bankruptcy can do, mm -hmm. uh, it's just such an emotional relief. Uh, mm -hmm. it, they, they walk out of our offices like a big weight has been lifted off of their shoulders they, they, they know what the future brings and they know they're finally in control of their finances. Um, you know, we, I'm sure you're like me. I, I have to keep a box of tissues near my desk mm -hmm. because people will become tearful. Mm -hmm. um, the emotions are just so strong when they know that bankruptcy is going to give them a chance to start fresh. So today, again, our objective is to give you a glimpse into exactly what that feels like what it feels like to be able to discharge your debt in bankruptcy and get a fresh start. We're not going to sugarcoat things here. I've said it before and I'll continue to say it. Bankruptcy should not be your first option. If there are other valid options available, then you should try those options before you seek bankruptcy protection. You know, you can still call us because it's important that you know what your options are and, and we'll help you discuss both your bankruptcy and non-bankruptcy options. Mm -hmm. um, there have been quite a few folks that have come to see me that I've simply said, you don't need to file bankruptcy. You can perhaps take out an additional loan against your home to consolidate your debt or uh, credit counseling with a legitimate credit counseling agency may be a good option. But reach out to us and understand what your options are. Um, we want to tell you today, though, about how our clients' lives have changed, how they've been able to uh, get their financial uh, issues resolved and set a foundation for going forward. Um, it's just such a good feeling to be able to help people get that fresh start. Wouldn't you say that's true, Gail? Absolutely. I can't tell you. I think yesterday, Ashley, in my office, we were like talking about how many discharge orders that we've gotten in the last week or two. And it's like a happy day for us, too, for them, um, because we know that they've you know worked hard to get through making the payments required under a Chapter 13. Um, and now they've you know crossed the finish line and they can truly start over. And bankruptcy doesn't mean the end of your credit. Um, it, it can be the beginning, a, a start over, a do over, um, like so many people need. Um, I think that with this COVID-19, that we're going to see more and more of that. And I think that um, bankruptcy can be a viable option to give people a fresh start so they can breathe again and not stress and cause, you know, 
marriage problems. I mean, there's a domino effect when it comes to finances that I see happening all the time when people are stressing over paying bills. Yeah. Gail, we, we've talked about the differences between chapter seven and chapter 13 bankruptcy, um, but I like each of my uh, uh, guests, my partners to kind of explain it in, in their own words, um, how chapter seven bankruptcy works and then also how a chapter 13 debt consolidation works and what the primary differences are. Could you just give our viewers just an overview, please? Sure. Chapter seven, um, a lot of times people refer to that as a straight bankruptcy. And what that does is it eliminates all the unsecured debts that a debt a creditor, uh, that a debtor has. And uh, basically, I just tell clients, you know, imagine there's an imaginary chalkboard and what chapter seven does is it wipes the slate clean. Um, now, if there's certain types, types of debts like a car or house that you want to keep, you typically can just continue making those regular contractual payments while wiping out those unsecured debts. Um, and chapter seven, you're in and out in about 90 days um, for the most part. And you, your do over starts much quicker because you're in and out so much faster. You can only file a chapter seven once every eight years. So you certainly want to learn from it. Um, and then, of course, chapter 13 is where you combine all the debts that you have. Typically, these situations are if you're behind on your car or if you um, uh, have a foreclosure set uh, on your house, we can stop those things from happening by giving you the protection that bankruptcy court offers um, and allows you to repay those debts up to a five year period um, so that you can kind of get your, your ducks in a row, so to speak. Thanks. That's that's great. And, and I think it's just important that people know that, uh, you know, that there are options and, and a good bankruptcy attorney is going to help you discuss all of those options. Um, I, I always warn, uh, uh, we get a lot of phone calls, Gail, where people call and <clears throat> their first question is, how much does a chapter seven cost or how much does a bankruptcy cost? Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we need to help you get beyond that question because mm -hmm. Chapter 7 may or may not be the best option for you. Um, that's why we offer free consultations. Um, be, be a little bit leery of anyone that mm -hmm. just quotes you a low fee over the phone because right. that, that attorney probably isn't really concerned, uh, you know, about you as an individual in your own uh, situation. They're, they're more concerned about you know, a $500 fee or whatever it may be. Right. Take advantage of the free consultation, call in, we'll assess your situation, we'll make a recommendation as to how you should proceed. And then and only then mm -hmm. do we quote in a quote a attorney's fee and let you know what the cost would be. Mm -hmm. um, so I see it now that we have a few more people logging in, uh, Gail. So I'm just gonna kind of give a recap here. Um, my name's Brad Bodis, and my friend and law partner, Gail Donaldson, is joining me today. Thank you, Gail. Um, we're with the Bond and Bodis Law Offices, and we have locations across Alabama, uh, Mississippi, and in the Knoxville area in Tennessee. Our toll-free number is across the bottom of your screen and our website. Um, if you need more information, <clears throat> excuse me, we have quite a bit of information on our website, and it's all searchable. Um, I, I think we address just about every situation. Uh, so if you just, you know, if you want to do a little bit more research on your own, I encourage you to go to our website, um, but then reach out. And uh, uh, during this ter current pandemic, we're offering absolutely free consultations with qualified, experienced bankruptcy attorneys. Uh, you can call the number on your screen or you can uh, fill out a form on our website and uh, then we'll reach out to you and schedule an appointment. Um, we, we do, um, uh, offer consultations currently by phone or video so that you can join one of our attorneys from the comfort and safety of your home or your office, wherever you feel secure right now. And we'll just talk through your situation. Mm -hmm. We want to help. Um, again, today's topic is what's life after bankruptcy really like? Mm -hmm. Um, and I want everybody to kind of, you know, take a perspective here and think about what your life's like now. A lot of anxiety, 
a lot of nervousness, trepidation. People um, don't have paychecks necessarily coming into their home. Bills are becoming due. Collectors may be calling. You may be worried about a repossession. There's a lot of anxiety, a lot of nervousness. And as Gail uh, suggested or shared earlier, that you know, that type of anxiety can become contagious. It can affect everything you do. Um, it can affect your marriage. It can affect your ability to be a good parent. It can affect, um, if, if you are working right now, your ability to do your job properly. So you need to be proactive. You need to take control of your finances. And the first step is educating yourself. Um, mm -hmm look at how things are now. Do you feel the stress and the anxiety? Um, have you found yourself only paying the interest on credit cards, just minimum payments or, um, you know, telling the lender on your car, on your mortgage that you need another month, you need an extension. Um, even if you do get those extensions, it still creates anxiety for you. Um, or, or are you ignoring calls from collectors? Are you letting them just go straight to voicemail? Um, I know how much anxiety that can cause. Um, perhaps you're not even opening your mail right now. Perhaps you're just, your mail's in a stack um, somewhere and you're not even looking at it because you don't want to see the late charges or the collection activities out there. Um, you're not alone right now. Um, studies indicate that uh, consumer debt is at an all-time high. It was at an all-time high before this COVID-19 pandemic started. Now things are even worse. And as we all know, unemployment levels are very high. Mm -hmm. It's time to take control of your situation. Um, life after bankruptcy is about hope. It, it, it's about you know, believing you're in control. And when you have hope and when you have confidence, the anxiety and the stress goes down and, and things get back to where they should be at home with your marriage and with your family, puts things in perspective. Um, when you reach out to us, when you take control of your situation, you're drawing a line in the sand. You're saying, this is it. I'm not going to just be you know, taken advantage of. I'm not going to just worry anymore. I'm going to take control of my finances. Mm -hmm. So the, the thing right now is, again, look at what the benefits of bankruptcy can be, what life after bankruptcy can bring. Mm -hmm. Gail, I like to summarize it like this. The, the first phase is when you hire us. As soon as you hire us, we can stop the calls from your creditors. Um, imagine being able to answer all the calls that come into your phone again. Um, you're not afraid of opening the mail because we're encouraging you to open your mail so that we can get a good list of everyone you owe. I also tell people, and Gail, we both know this is important. If you're getting collection letters, save them. Mm -hmm. Don't just throw them away. We, as your bankruptcy attorneys, love to see those collection letters. And here's why. A lot of collectors put things in those letters that they shouldn't. There's language in there that's deceptive or misleading. And if we can find a letter like that in your stack of letters, the law provides that that collector is required to pay you $1,000 under the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. Um, so each and every one of those letters can be worth up to a thousand dollars. So save those letters and bring them to us. Um, but you want to have the envelope. <laughs> we'll take the envelope too. <laughs> and that's right, and the envelope. Um, bring them, bring them to us. Uh, yeah. Collect them all and bring them to us. And that's right. even after you file bankruptcy. If you retain us and we file your bankruptcy, and you continue to get those type of letters, uh, just as important then to get them to us. Um, so. Gail, we've had some questions start to come in here. I'm seeing them across the side of our screen here, and I want to pose some of these questions to you and give you a chance to respond. Um, so you ready? I'm ready. Okay. 
how soon after how soon after bankruptcy will I be able to get a credit card? Well, and fortunately or unfortunately, pretty quick. Um, once you get your discharge order, you're debt free. And so I, I, I talked to a client that I'd represented uh, not long ago, and he told me I'm getting applications. Car, you know, agencies are sending him uh, solicitations and credit card solicitations. And so I said, well, what are you doing with them? He's like, I'm throwing those things in the trash. Um, I don't want to get in trouble again. Good. <laughs> so good. That, that was good to hear. But so it, it is really easy to get new debt after a discharge. And so, you know, when I caution clients is, you know, if you do incur this new debt after discharge, you need to pay the balance off every month. That's going to be one of the best uh rebuilding your credit, the things that you can do if you pay off the, the balance every month. But if you are, that is a weakness for you, um, then uh, I would stay away from them um, because it is easy to get in over your head again. You know, Gail, I have said before, we're, we're one of the few businesses uh, as, as a consumer bankruptcy law firm, we don't like repeat customers. <laughs> we want you to enjoy the full. Oh, I, love them. I, love them. I want to see you in the grocery store or somewhere like that, but not my office if we can help it. Exactly. Our, our job is to, is to uh, make you happy and uh, um, uh, free from, uh, from debt. So uh, Gail's right. And this is, this has changed during the time we've been practicing law, Gail, but 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. It was more difficult to rebuild credit, but as you said, our clients get pre-approved credit cards in the mail uh, within days after their bankruptcy discharge now. Mm -hmm. So that's not difficult. No, it's not. All right. I have another question here, Gail. Um, if I file bankruptcy, will I lose my car or, or can I keep it? In a, in a bankruptcy under Chapter 13, where you make your payments, um, the car can be included in the Chapter 13 and the payment would be uh, paid through the court, you would not lose your vehicle. Um, the, the car places, whether it's in the plan or if you're paying it direct because you filed Chapter 7, they just want to be paid. So once your case is filed either under Chapter 7 or Chapter 13, as long as the car um, is being paid for one way or the other, they cannot take your vehicle. So I, I get that a lot. A lot of clients think that I'll lose something if a file will the whole point of bankruptcy is to protect what you have. Exactly. Most of our clients do not lose anything, any of their property when they file. Unless they want to. You can surrender if you choose. Correct. Um, like I have a lot of clients who will have a car that hasn't ran in two years. I mean, you certainly need to let them have that and get rid of it out of your, you know, get it out of your yard. Um, but if you want to keep it and you're paying for it through um, a bankruptcy under chapter 13 or paying it direct, then it's yours to keep. Or another example might be if you have a car that um, an expensive car um, mm. uh, before this pandemic, when you were making a lot of money and you don't mm. really need that expensive car, you might let right. that go back, discharge. We do the see a lot of uh, you know, buyer's remorse type things. Um, you know, you, it, it's that new car smell gets us every time, doesn't it? I, I think, it, I think the car is worse. Um, it, it, it's, you're right <laughs> that people want to keep that new car, but we, yeah. um, we, that's just one of the things we go over with you during that consultation. We, we talk about, you know, those hard truths. Can you really afford this car yeah. going forward? Need versus want. And, and similar to the credit cards mm -hmm. following bankruptcy, if you need a new car, that all, also is not difficult to do. Um, uh, again, uh, Car lenders uh, write our clients shortly after the discharge and they, they offer, you know, the financing of a new car. Uh, there, there are companies that will work with people to help rebuild their credit by arranging for financing post bankruptcy. And just a side note, after a chapter seven, if you were to buy another car, you're almost a better credit risk for the car dealer or the finance company because you can't file another chapter seven for eight years and you freed up all this other debt um, that you were paying before to hopefully be able to afford that new car comfortably without getting in a bond. In short, you're in control of your finances. Exactly. Again. You exactly. can choose. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm worried about my house. I'm worried about losing my home. Mm -hmm. If I'm, you know, if I file bankruptcy mm -hmm. or, or, 
similar question. Uh, I'm already behind and facing a foreclosure and I want to keep my home. So do people lose their homes when they file bankruptcy? Um, the main thing I think that everyone needs to know is that, again, bankruptcy is to help you keep the items you want to keep, but you have to be able to afford it. So we can stop a foreclosure and you continue making your house payments um, just like you were, where we basically catch you up on the past due payments in a chapter 13, and then you maintain those payments. But you know, the main thing is you have to be able to afford that monthly payment because most of the time we cannot include or change the terms of a mortgage. It's um, as Gail says, if you want to keep your home, uh, we should be able to help you keep your home uh, through bankruptcy. Uh, it's it's. Uh, one I know, I know, I'm sure you see this, Brad, too, but I, we have a lot of mortgage companies that clients seem to struggle with um, in how they do their bookkeeping and how they keep maintain their um, payment records. Um, so it's really important whether, you know, when you're filing bankruptcy and I, one of the rules changes that I really like that the bankruptcy code implemented is at the end of your case, the mortgage company has to file a, basically a notice saying that you're current on your right. house payments. And that's been a really good rule change, I think, because it really helps clients when they're getting towards the end of their chapter 13 truly have a fresh start when it comes to their house payments. So they know exactly where they are with the mortgage company. And then they're able to keep making that payment post bankruptcy. So um, that's been one good thing that I've, I've seen um, with the chapter 13s um, in the last, I guess, three or four years. Yeah, it's, it's, it's again, you control your finances. You know uh, where you stand with your mortgage company mm -hmm. when you, when you leave bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So uh, say uh, I uh, don't have a home currently or I can't afford the home I'm in and I am going to surrender my home in bankruptcy mm -hmm. or perhaps I've already my home has already been foreclosed on. Mm -hmm. Will I be able to get another home after bankruptcy? Yes. I, and I've seen this time and time again with clients. Uh, in fact, I know one client in particular who had a like a mobile home, uh, surrendered it um, three years later. You know, she worked on her credit, paid everything timely. And then once um, she uh, was ready to try to buy a house, bought a house and now is living that American dream of owning her own home for the very first time. So it, it is it's something that we see. It, it happens. Um, you you have to take control and um, budget. And I think that it's easily doable after a bankruptcy. And, and as you said, many of our clients do purchase homes following bankruptcy. Um, but as we said earlier, I don't want to sugarcoat this. It's, it's not immediately. It's not magic. Your bankruptcy. <laughs> You have to work with us, listen to what we're telling you, mm -hmm. be responsible with your credit after bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. But I think most of the major lenders, uh, at least with the, the government back type mortgages, uh, if you're two years post discharge, mm -hmm. um, they'll work with you um, with, with good terms so that you mm -hmm. can realize that American dream and, and buy a new home following your bankruptcy. Absolutely. So um, I must I've mentioned earlier that calls from creditors will stop. Um, one of our viewers here wants to know how quickly those calls will stop. The second your case is filed with the court, um, you're given a bubble of protection called the automatic stay. Now, creditors have to know about it um, for that to uh, for them not to know not to call. But once they learn of that automatic stay, um, whether we call them, like if it's a car or foreclosure, we typically will call and give that case information. So immediately they will stop any action from going forward uh, against you. Uh, state court, if there's a lawsuit, that's something else that the automatic stay will um, stop. So we can file something with the state court to get that lawsuit um, stayed by the protections that are given under bankruptcy code. So it is, you know, I jokingly tell clients, it's like um, if you're if you've ever watched The Incredibles, um, Violet has her little force field that surrounds her. You know, that's what you get when you file bankruptcy. You get a little bubble protection and that stops creditors from taking any action against you. And if they do take action, then they're they're liable under the laws uh, that they're violating a court order. The court ordered these collectors uh, mm -hmm. to leave our clients alone. And if, if collectors continue to call or continue to bother our clients, we can help them um, uh, 
through through the court's authority uh, mm -hmm. to stop those collectors, and we do that quite often. We do. Mm -hmm. um, so, all right, I'm behind. I've been without a paycheck, Gail, and I, I've already had a lawsuit filed against me mm -hmm. by one of my credit card companies. Can I you help me in that situation? Absolutely. Um, bankruptcy again. We can stop the um, action from going forward. Typically, we file what's in state court, what's called a suggestion of bankruptcy, and it basically kicks, kicks it out um, of the court. And, uh, you know, we include that debt to be taken care of through your bankruptcy, whether it's under Chapter 13 or Chapter 7. Right. It, it's it's an amazing thing, that automatic stay. I like the, I like the force field or the bubble description. <laughs> yeah. um, Clients seem to get that when I tell that one. So. Well, it, if they important. have a kid at home anyway, they, they may not have watched the movie otherwise. But I highly recommend it. <laughs> and, and, you know, in, in picking uh, a bankruptcy attorney, again, it's important to use somebody with experience and that's mm -hmm. qualified because um, it's not just about collecting your fee and, and filing your petition with the court. Our job is to protect you after the bankruptcy is filed mm -hmm. and after your discharge. Mm -hmm. um, you've paid us money. Uh, we're with you for the long run. Mm -hmm. um, when, when you make the decision to hire an attorney, make sure that you're not just comfortable with the attorney, but you're comfortable with her staff, uh, mm -hmm. with the people in her office, um, because, again, our relationship is going to last for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're filing a Chapter 13 bankruptcy, your, your case is going to last itself for three to five years. Mm -hmm. Um, but even with the Chapter 7 bankruptcy, although the process itself is over, usually in under four months, uh, we're here for the long run. We've been doing this for decades. Um, we both started in high school, clearly. Um, <laughs> but, but we're going to be here for a long time, and we're going to be here to help you protect your bankruptcy discharge mm -hmm. in the future. I think the one thing I can say about all the attorneys in our office is that we truly love helping people and I love to talk. So um, I love uh, to <laughs> meet new people and learn their stories and uh, help them. And um, I think that it, all of our all, all of our attorneys in our offices and staff feel the same way. So we're here to help and we want to help. Um, and if we don't have the solution, we're going to look for it for you. You know, Gail, I, uh, this goes back a little bit to what we discussed uh, last week with Suzanne Shin about the morality of filing bankruptcy. But mm -hmm. <clears throat> I know you, I know many of our attorneys deem um, what we do really to be a sort of mystery. Um, people come in, they, they're, they're hurting, um, uh, they, 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 marriages are hurting, um, people just feel like they failed. And it's our job to help them get out of that situation. Um, I, I love interacting with clients and I mm -hmm. love when they leave our office and they feel like they're in a better place. And Absolutely. that's our job. We're not just attorneys. We're also counselors. We're attorneys mm -hmm. and counselors at law. And that's part of our job. Absolutely. All right. So I have another question here for you, Gail. Um, okay. Will my employer find out that I'm filing bankruptcy or do I have to tell them that I'm filing bankruptcy? Well, every district can be a little different on this one. Um, here in um, the middle district, um, we can ask the court for you to pay the payment direct. Um, they prefer that an income withholding order be sent to your employer because the success rate is so much better. And you know, this, your this is... Yeah. This is in a chapter 13. Bank. Yes, in chapter 13. Yeah. Chapter 7, no, they would not know unless you, unless you owed them for a debt or something. But I don't see that very often. Um, but your employer can't uh, discriminate against you because you filed a bankruptcy. I think most people would say that you would be a, be a better employee if you have your finances in order. So I, most employers don't have a problem with the income order. Um, and uh, but they prefer. I think it's just easier for them to have take it out of your paycheck. You you don't even have to worry about the payment or Chapter Thirteen. It's just taken before you know it reaches your hand, um, and they do it for you. So it's a really a convenience thing. But the employer doesn't have to be told um, all the time. But if you're in a Chapter Thirteen, there's a possibility that an income order order will be sent 
Um, but our, the middle district at least will let us request if there's a good valid reason, like if you haven't been there very long or if you handled money, we can ask for an excuse or, you know, if you're self-employed, of course, you know, there, there wouldn't be a need for one. But um, those are usually the, the you know, scenarios that we see um, in the office. Gail, you made an important point. Um, in, in, in just a recap, in a Chapter mm -hmm. 7, a straight bankruptcy situation, normally your employer does not learn of the bankruptcy. In a mm -hmm. Chapter 13, more often than not, your employer is going to be part of the process. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but and, and that's worrisome for people yeah. that come to see us and we understand that but in addition uh, to the fact that both of us are attorneys we're also employers we have mm -hmm. people that work in our offices that work with us to help our clients um and, and i don't think i'm alone in saying this just because i'm a bankruptcy attorney i would much rather have an employee that has addressed their financial problems than one that has not and maybe getting collection mm -hmm. calls or maybe right. dealing with anxiety. Um, as an employer, I want somebody that doesn't have that worry and doesn't mm -hmm. have those distractions. Um, as a matter of fact, you know, one of our uh, partners, um, Ron Sixtus, does a lot of um, security clearance mm -hmm. work. And Ron has shared with me that um, from a security clearance perspective, um, it's better often to have uh, resolved the debt through a bankruptcy um, than to have somebody that owes money, that owes their creditors money. Because, you know, if somebody is beholding to creditors, they're, they're likely more of a risk. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, it, it, it may or may not be learned by your employer. Um, mm -hmm. But even if it is, it's normally not a problem. In fact, it can be just the opposite. You're going to be a better employee after you mm -hmm. seek bankruptcy protection. And with Maxwell and Gunner here in Montgomery, we do see a lot of uh, military people uh, coming through. And it, I think it is better to, it's rather than sticking your head in the sand, you're dealing with addressing with a problem. And I think that most people or employers especially would prefer that. So, so I have a question from somebody we know here that asks, um, do I have to pay any money up front to file bankruptcy? Mm -hmm. Well, the, the answer to that question can vary from district to district. Here in the middle district and the southern district, we also practice there um, out of this office, um, which is Selma um, area. And of course, Opelika, Dothan, uh, Montgomery is the middle district. Um, there is no upfront money for a chapter 13, um, zero down. Um, and then all the fees and court costs are rolled in through your payment. Chapter seven, those fees are paid up front, but we allow clients to make those in payments um, over time. So, uh, you know, we're very flexible about that. We, we want to help you and we're here to help you in any way we can and, and work with you any way we can. And we, we, we understand that the people that come to us, are already facing financial problems so we don't want to be part of the problem we will work with you um, either to restructure your debt through a chapter 13 where you can pay all or most of your fees through your plan of reorganization or if straight bankruptcy is best for you we can set up a payment plan so that you can pay uh, at a pace that's comfortable for you mm -hmm. um what can i do uh, you know, I've heard that student loans are not dischargeable in mm -hmm. bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. uh, what what kind of help can I get with student loans? Well, one thing I, I always want, I tell clients is, please don't get in default with the student loan company if you can. And uh, there's a lot of ways that you can avoid that by um, using a def, uh, forbearance um, uh, workout arrangements directly with the student loan company or deferment plans. Um, however, if you file bankruptcy, the uh, student loan companies will cease those collections uh, against you. Uh, under Chapter 13 and Chapter 7, those debts will survive bankruptcy typically. So it's very important that you get rid of as much debt as you can so that you will be able to afford the payments after, on those debts post-bankruptcy. Um, but typically, the, the uh, student loan companies that I've you know, dealt with are really willing to work with you, but you have to reach out to them. The only thing I would add to that is um, 
even though student loans are not dischargeable in bankruptcy generally, and there are some exceptions, yeah, there are. Um, but the automatic stay still applies. Exactly. So, uh, you know, if you are being harassed or are being um, uh, anxiety is resulting from that student loan debt, if you do seek bankruptcy protection while you're in the bankruptcy, that student loan lender cannot collect from you. Mm -hmm. um, the, the exceptions um, that provide for uh, the discharge of a student loan in bankruptcy um, are, are somewhat complex. And again, another reason to talk to a qualified attorney. Um, generally, a student loan is not dischargeable under what's called the Bruner test, a, a test that's been adopted by most of the bankruptcy courts, and, unless they're creating an undue hardship. And, Undue hardship is a pretty tough standard. Um, it usually means that not only are you unable to pay now, but there's no hope that you're going to be able to pay towards that student loan in the future. Um, but but even then, um, uh, you know, there, there are differences with government guaranteed and private student loans. Um, uh, so, so address all of those issues when you call for your free consultation. And I want to say again, please remember to our, our listeners, our viewers, that during this time, um, a lot of anxiety. We understand that we are offering absolutely free initial consultations. We're doing it by video or phone from the comfort of your home or office. Uh, be proactive. Reach out. Call the number you see on our screen or visit our website and arrange for a consultation. Uh, we'll be glad to talk you through your situation. Um, and our attorneys have been doing this for a long time. Um, Gail, I see one more question here that I want to address. Um, I, 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 we've discussed that in a Chapter 13, you can often pay the fee through your bankruptcy. In a Chapter 7 case, we'll work out payment arrangements. But mm -hmm. um, what does it cost to file bankruptcy? Well, the fees are going to vary usually based on the complexity of your case. Um, it, the, you know, I hate to give a number because there's really not one number that I can give for every case. Generally speaking, I would say anywhere from $900 to $1,500. Um, the filing fee in a Chapter 7 is $335. Um, those are, uh, you know, again, we break those up over time if you need to. Um, and again, so we can work with you uh, any way we can to, to get, get your case filed. All right. So, so it's, again, important to know uh, we want to know all of the facts. We want to know what all is going on for you before we quote your fee. Exactly. It's not fair for us to quote somebody with a simple situation, the same fee as somebody that maybe uh, operated their own business. Um, has issues concerning dischargeability, more complex issues. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to do that initial consultation absolutely free. We're going to go through your situation, help you to analyze your situation, decide what the best course of action is for you. Mm -hmm. And then we'll quote you a fee that we feel is fair. Mm -hmm. And we'll keep in mind your ability to pay that fee. Mm -hmm. um, how we'll arrange that for you. Right. Um, so I want to thank everybody that's participated. I want to thank you, Gail, um, for answering sure. questions. Um, I want people to know you're not alone. Mm -hmm. um, we're here to help you. Um, I'm, I'm so pleased uh, with these Facebook Live presentations because I'm able to share some of my law partners that I'm so proud of. Um, you can look at Gail and you've, you've heard her today. You know that she's concerned about you. You know that she's qualified, that she knows the answers to your questions. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll find that with, with all of our attorneys. Uh, please be proactive. Reach out. Take control of your life. Um, don't let the anxiety uh, immobilize you. Don't don't. Don't I would just offer this too. I think one of the biggest reasons that people don't come to see me is pride. Um, if, if you go to church with me, if you see me uh, out and about at school or whatever, never let pride stop you from reaching out and talking to me. I, I'm happy to talk to you. Everything is going to be kept confidential. 
Um, and I, I want to be able to help direct you in any form or fashion that we can. Um, that's what you know we're here for. We're a community. We're families. Um, we want to help each other get through all of this. Yeah, you know, Gail, it's um, I'll, I'll be in bankruptcy court sometimes, and I'll I'll see somebody I know or uh, that I perhaps went to church with, or um, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, their kids went to school with my kids, and I'll mm -hmm. say, you know, why didn't why didn't you call me? And they'll say exactly what you did. Yeah, um, they were embarrassed, but. Mm -hmm. um, you and I have both helped a lot of friends over the years. Um, and, you know, our other friends don't know that we keep yeah. what happens confidential. Exactly. But, but please um, know that we're here, um, know that we want to help you. And and pride is a problem. It's it's mm -hmm. I'll, I'll say it. It's a bigger problem for males usually than it is for me females. And um yeah. that that pride can just keep you from doing what's right mm -hmm. it can keep you from you know you got to swallow that pride and do what's right for your family mm -hmm. uh, for your spouse um and, and to get to a better place um so so don't let pride get in the way right. any other important points you'd like to make before we finish gail um, I just would say, you know, don't be afraid to reach out to one of us um, to talk about your finances. I think that um, there is life after bankruptcy. And so it's important to find out, you know, educate yourself and uh, be able to have a plan. You may not need bankruptcy now. It may be eight months from now, but at least you have the foundation so that you can make good decisions for you and your family. And, and we're here to help you with that. Or better yet, you may never need to file bankruptcy and we may be able to help you make decisions that will keep you from having to file bankruptcy. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, so many times um, I wish people would have come to see me earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, we could have given advice that would have kept things from getting so much worse. Um, yeah. So the consultation's free. Our number's on the screen in front of you, our website. You can fill out a form there to reach out for a free consultation. We're available all the time. Mm -hmm. um, Gail, we've covered a lot today. I want to thank again our viewers. Um, I want our viewers to know that they need to step forward. They need to take control. We're here to help. Um, this video recording if it was this video today if it was helpful to you the recording will be available on our facebook page and um, also linked from our website um, so if you know a friend or a family member that might benefit from this um, mm -hmm. encourage them um, to go to our facebook page to to look at the facebook live presentations we've done um, and again our website we have a blog on our website. Um, our partner, Ron Sixtus, does a podcast. We've covered so many different issues concerning bankruptcy, concerning finances, um, and the website's completely searchable. So uh, reach out, get the information you can, know that we're here to help. We're going to do these Facebook Live presentations uh, while we're going through this, uh, these trying times together, Gail. And um, every Wednesday at one o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time, tune in. Uh, we, we will do a, a slightly different topic each week, um, but we'll always be able to answer questions. And um, if you have questions that come up after a live presentation, uh, feel free to message us. Feel free to post the questions uh, through our uh, website to us um, or call us as we discussed for a free consultation where we can try to answer those questions for you. Um, we're going to get through this, y'all. It's 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 tough. I, you know, people talk about things getting back to normal, Gail. Um, I think we're going to have to learn new normals. Um, yeah. It's uh, everything is changing, but what I've learned is that you don't gain anything by complaining about changes. You have to adapt to the changes. Um, you have to ride the wave, I guess. And we've got to get used to some new realities. Um, heck, Gail, 
15 years ago, if I'd have told you we were going to do a Facebook live presentation, we wouldn't have even known what Facebook was or. No, I wouldn't have known. I wouldn't have known. Crazy. Hey, you know me 15 years ago. I didn't know how to use a computer. I, I came a long way myself. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here to help y'all. Um, if you have a friend or family member that you think would benefit from this, um, please let them know about this presentation. But until next week, uh, God bless all of y'all. Uh, we're here and we're going to get through this together. Thank you very much. Thanks, Gail. Oh, thank you.